Hey guys, Aaron here. We've recently been inspired by a few images that have been floating around the internet. Basically, people have been attaching lights to the top of Roombas and driving them around their living room or dining room and taking a long exposure photo of the Roomba. It produces some pretty uh, stunning images. To take this a step further and create some of our own stunning images, we thought that we could attach an LED matrix to the top of a rover whose wheels are connected to stepper motors so we can finally control the movement of the robot. Also, the winners to the Raspberry Pi 3 contest will be announced at the end of this video. And let's get started. This is the LED matrix that we're gonna use for our project. I soldered a couple wires on the back. One is a signal wire, and the other is a power wire, which takes five volts. Typically, most people use an Arduino to control these lights. Unfortunately, the program memory space on an Arduino is too small to store the image array for the light painting. Therefore, we're going to use a Raspberry Pi to control these with an open source library. So to make this work, we'll just plug it into the power supply, and then plug the power supply into the Raspberry Pi. And then if I connect the signal wire to my Raspberry Pi, you can see that you can make some really cool effects with this LED matrix. This is the chassis that we're going to use to house electronics for this project. We 3D printed it. Up front there's a slot where we just put our battery in. And then we're going to attach our Raspberry Pi to the front of it. We made this adapter piece so it's a bit easier to take the Raspberry Pi on and off. We're using 2.5 millimeter screws to attach the Raspberry Pi. To drive the stepper motors for our wheels, we're using these two breakout boards. We found that the breakout boards work a bit better than the Raspberry Pi stepper motor hat, so we decided to use these instead. I made this small attachment so that we can fit it on the back of the light rover. And we're using 3mm screws to attach this. We're using two NEMA 17 200 millimeter motors. These are the same motors that we use for our airsoft turret project. They'll fit underneath the chassis, and we also 3D printed a couple brackets to help us put these on. I soldered a couple female headers to the end of the stepper motors, just so it was easier to attach the breakout boards. To clean up the wires, I routed them underneath and around the chassis, just so they're out of the way. I then wired both the stepper motors to the breakout boards, and put some zip ties on the loose cables, just for some cable management. There's a nice area underneath the chassis where I could put the excess wires. Two pairs of power wires were hooked up to a voltage amplifier, one for each stepper motor. It's the same one we used on our gun turret. After the stepper motor electronics were plugged in and the wires were tucked in nice and neat, the rover was finally ready for the wheels. These wheels were 3D printed on our 3D printer and they slide right onto the end of the motor shafts. They're also held in place with a set screw, which is not shown here. The electronics for the motor was then plugged into the battery using the USB and the cables held out of the way using a zip tie. Finally, the LED matrix was mounted to the top of the rover using a standoff bracket that we also 3D printed. It was then plugged into the battery and also to the Raspberry Pi. 
You might have noticed that we don't have any front wheels on our light rover. That's because we can control each of these wheels individually with our stepper motors and spin them in opposite direction to turn the rover. This is a little bit uh, simpler design and it's not necessary for a steering mechanism like in a car. This tab here will just slide on the ground and support the front end of our rover. We wrote some code for this project and you can find it on our GitHub page. It's called Light Rover. If you scroll down, you can see there's a bunch of different files in here. And the main file, lightrover.py, uh, is what we'll use to run the robot. There's a bunch of different dependencies up top, uh, two of which are included in the repository. Down at the bottom, you see that there are two lines. One is rover paint image, and the other is rover paint vector. We'll go into both in a minute. Basically, the paint image paints a image file, and the paint vector paints a vector file. To run it, you can just type sudo python lightrover.py and specify an image file. You can make a lot of complex shapes with just straight line vectors. As a simple example, let's take a look at a rectangle. This rectangle is composed of four straight line vectors specified by magnitude and direction. We'll call this a 1.5 by 1 meter rectangle. After telling the rover to travel a certain distance, we then command it to turn a certain angle. And then we repeat this process with each pair of distance and angle commands, creating a segment in a specified direction of a specified length. You can see how this same method can be used to create more complex geometric shapes, as each segment, just like the rectangle, is composed of a segment in a certain direction at a certain length. The next part was for us to draw an image pixel by pixel. We took a low resolution image and divided it into sections. The rover then flashed one section, moved on to another portion of the picture, flashed that section, and repeated until it filled in an entire row. After it fills in an entire row, it then turns around and gets into position to fill in the next row. For each row, it gets into position, pauses for a second, flashes its image, moves on to the next section pauses, flashes, and repeats until it fills in an entire row. RGB values and brightness values are filled in from top to bottom and left to right for the first row, but then after it turns around into the second row, the top now becomes the bottom, the bottom gets filled first, and it gets filled in from right to left. This whole pattern gets repeated until the image is done. Alright guys, so that's it for this video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're not going to be selling any parts for this project, uh, but we will be providing the 3D files online for you if you want to print them yourself. 
As for the Raspberry Pi giveaway, the two winners are Daniel Ikobachi, sorry if I pronounced that name wrong, and Raba. Uh, Daniel's plan to use it on a smart fish tank, and Raba is going to use it to work on some projects to teach his kids. So congratulations to you two. Uh, for everyone else, uh, don't be too disappointed. We will be having some more giveaways in the future, and we'll even be trying to ship internationally as well. But until then, see you next time.